at the RDS in Dublin, the home of the BT Young Scientist and Technology Exhibition. As we mentioned yesterday, this is the first full in-person event since 2020. And as you can see, the place is bursting with excitement. Stick around because we have lots of amazing projects to show you and lots of amazing students to meet. Hundreds of pupils have been setting up their exhibits and today the doors are open to the public. So we're off to have a look around. I'm going to go see what the secondary schools have been up to. And I'm checking out the primary school section. Bye! Bye! <laughs> This exhibition is where future scientists and engineers get to show off their great ideas. There are just so many products to look at, so I better get going. The doors are open and the public have been welcomed into the BT Young Scientist and Technology Exhibition 2023. It's so good to be here, like there's so many amazing projects. It's our first Young Scientist, so we're second years and it's just so fun and staying in the hotel and we've made so many friends from all over Ireland, it's just a great crack. And there's lots to do as well, like there's loads of like, activities and the food is really nice. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good environment and we're meeting loads of new people. Yeah, mm. it's lovely, the experience is nice and it's nice having everyone come up and ask different questions. It's brilliant, very exciting, um, working on this for months and months so it's great to finally get here and meet all these new people and enjoy ourselves. Day two here at BTYSTE, and there's no fear of this buzz dying down. Not only have all the displays been put up and the judging commenced, but pupils from across the country are here in their thousands to check out all the unique projects at this year's exhibition. Well, it's the Pet Tracker app, and it tells you when to feed your pets. I have three dogs at home. The oldest is Benny, and he's older than me, about 15 human years. Our parents were always telling us, like, go to bed the night before a test and like before a match so you get a good night's sleep and we just like basically wanted to find out if that was like true. We came up with an app that will inform our parents if they need help rather than having to ring them and it's a non-invasive way so it's a kind eye to let us know if our grandparents need help. There's a device concealed in the life jacket so that once you fall into water it will report that you're in danger because you're falling into water and also give the coordination so that a rescue authority can come and pick you up. So we're doing the perception of beauty to those young children um, so we're seeing um, if children and have a perception of beauty and if to do it in better racism. Some projects are still waiting to be assessed while others have already been seen and contemplated by the panel of judges. They're so nice and supportive like we were kind of nervous going into it but they're so supportive. The judges are really nice. They're really and, like, nice. Mm. Good to talk to. They were really nice and you know we just got to talk all about our project which is nice because we worked on it now for a while so. The winner of this exciting exhibition will be announced at Friday's closing ceremony. Best of luck to all the participants. Thanks Reem, lots of fascinating projects there. I'm at the primary school fair and everywhere I look there's something exciting to see. I'm going to fly around now and check out as many of the projects as I can. The BT Young Scientist and Technology Exhibition demonstrates the innovative talent that the youth of Ireland have to offer. The youngest of those demonstrating their work are found in the primary school fair, where their creativity is on show as far as the eye can see. We had hundreds and hundreds of ideas on what to do and we eventually decided that Optical Illusions was the thing that we wanted to do. And what did you find out about Optical Illusions? Old people and young people, it doesn't really depend on how old you are, it just depends on like how you think. This is BBC uh, Microbit, it's, they're like mini computers and you can code them on your laptop. The creative process can be a long road, often reaping the best rewards. So we got batteries and we had magnets and we made a train and we used raw copper wire and that was the tracks and the electric current pushes it around the circuit. And this project is about the mini boat race and we've made a lot of boats out of materials and we're going to recycle at home. Well we actually done a lot of research like about Archimedes principle uh, that's the question of why some objects sink in fluids and some objects float. So our project is about aviation. Can you tell me about the paper airplanes, what was the idea behind that? I was kind of thinking as to what the best shape of it would be and maybe why one of them would go further than the other one. From boats and trains to optics and the magic of micro bits, these creative young minds are proving that you're never too young to be a scientist. With a bit of hard work and dedication, the only limit is the stretch of your imagination. The wisdom of these primary school children goes far beyond their years. Don't give up when you love something, try your best to achieve it. Be brave and keep going. Don't make robots just yet, because they'll probably take over the world. With such enthusiastic, scientific young minds already getting to work, 
Our future is in safe, capable hands.